Okay, today we're actually going to try to remove the ignition coil from this my car. My car is a 2008 PT Cruiser Touring. And one thing that I've watched, I've watched a few videos of how to do this, and they're saying that what you want to do is you going to move this bolt right here, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there. And then they say there is another bolt back there somewhere that I can't see. So I don't know what's going on with this. Like I said, I don't see another bolt. I see they had to move the camshaft. And they're saying that you have to move like this tube right here as well going into the, the hood manifold, the intake manifold, this one right there, this one right here as well. So basically those two you got removed what they say. And it looks like I have to do a little oil cleanup right there. Let's see here. Okay. Well, my oil cap's on there tight. That's still warm radiator and to remove that they say you want to oh wow I never noticed that before look at that you can still see that but you got to move that bolt that bolt with the thermostats right down here and here's my intake fan which works just fine But one thing they'd never tell you is they said, yeah, just move those five bolts right there, the one bolt that's right back there, they can't find. Tie it up to your hood up here. That's why I got this for. This is Velcro from doing fiber optics. But the one thing they never tell you to do in all these videos, and I've watched a few of them, is to disconnect the positive battery charge. Because what you don't know is there's a, a coil wire that goes right in the back of the intake, the ejection coil that you have to take off. It's always good to disconnect the battery so you don't get electrical sh uh, short circuit on yourself. So I'll give you a second and I'll see what I can do for you. And as you can see, I did the, undid the bolt from this side right here and the one on this side as well. But this thing is not coming off the battery at all. But yeah, some of those had batteries a bit loose. And there's some sort of crud down there that was like an insect that got fried. Oh well. Oh yeah, he's crispy fried for sure. Well, we can't take that off. This won't let us. So hopefully we'll find another way to get that piece off without frying any electrical circuitry. So let's get started with loosening those five bolts because like I said, the bolt that's supposed to be right back there that's actually supposed to be on this side there isn't one if that isn't weird I went to other used PT cruisers and I had a piece that came up right along here that bolted in right down here but if you look that's pretty loose so nothing's really holding that in place unless they're talking about the piece that goes right down there and screws into that bolt see that piece right there that goes probably right down there and screws into there somewhere. But I'm not exactly sure about that. Okay, I've already sort of loosened these bolts so they could be like taken out by hand. Let me see he's got it. You need an extender, you need a reducer if you got, because the eight millimeter is pretty small. And as you can see, you're gonna need to fit it right inside there too, take that one out. Keep in mind, I am not a mechanic, so this is my first time doing this, but from what I've seen and from what I know, if everything goes smoothly, I should be able to hopefully lift this intake manifold straight up and fold it back just a bit because it's, oh my gosh, that one's sort of hard to come out. And as you can see, I got the bolts out. So let's see. If I'm correct about just lifting this piece straight up. Oh yeah. 
nothing back there holding it down at all. Look at that. You can just grab it and just lift it up. So most likely the chances are. Okay, that's going a little bit. Okay, so let's see here. I might have to loosen this piece right back here to get that off. That piece right back there. That goes to my air intake, so I'm gonna have to loosen that one to get this up. So if you hang with me, we'll get uh well <laughs> I guess I need a screwdriver, so let's go get me a screwdriver, shall we? It says I need a flat head. As you can see, uh, it's too short. Well, I'm gonna to put that up there anyways. It's always good to carry tools with you because you never know when something might go wrong. Uh, look at this. Oh, there's a flathead. <laughs> That's a nice flathead too. So let's go and loosen this hose up right there and take off. And as you can see, I got the hose off. Uh, let's see here. Because the... Uh, that's your that's your injection coil right there. And they say what's always good to do, so remember how everything goes, is you want to take a photo of this, seeing how everything goes back on there. But I'm gonna have to find a way to lift this even more so if you hold on and if you look, I got a good seal there. Those are the factory ones that came with it of the seals for the intake manifold, so that should be good. Okay, well, I had one minor malfunction when it came to this. My malfunction was is I could not relieve, remove those spark plug wires right there that are connected to the injection intake uh, because they're on there like super tight and I don't want to risk taking them off without breaking them and having to replace them with. So I guess my injection uh, my injection thing with bobber will just have injection coil will just have to wait until I actually get more spark plug wires So in case I break one I have something to replace it with so I guess this video is on hold And when I started my car up after I put all this back together It was actually idling high. I checked the cables right here And these actually work pretty good see still works pretty good still really tight perfect looseness from what I've seen and I couldn't figure out what it was well somewhere down there I can't see where there is an eight millimeter socket piece well let's just say I actually found something to replace it with and I found out what my problem was this came off this so I was letting way too much air in, so I was idling too high. So I gotta take my uh, intake manifold off all over again and put that piece in and make sure it stays in. <laughs> so make sure that when you're done with your mechanic work, that every piece goes back to where you found it. As you can see, it was this head gasket right here, the second one you see right there, that fell out. The other three, we're still in, so that's why I was getting a high idle, is because that piece was missing. So now let's put it back in properly. Okay, and as you've seen, I've actually hand tightened these outside ones. So they're just they're still a bit loose, but they're, they're still a bit snug. And I'm doing the same thing with this one. If I can get it to go in. But as you saw, I missed one of the gaskets that went in the, the intake manifold. So I made sure I put that one back. But I do try to follow videos, and the one thing I did notice while I was doing this, that was like super, super loose. So it wasn't making a full connection with the battery. That might also be a problem why it's having idling issues. So if it's not, that means that I gotta replace the um, either the ignition coil, which I showed you was in the back, or the um, fuel pump or should I say fuel filter, which is actually located in the fuel pump, which is located in the fuel tank. So like I said, when you do your mechanic work, if you're doing it yourself, 
make sure that everything you, you start with is back the way it was when you first started it. So you notice, I re-put that piece back on that it took off. I re-put that piece back on that it took off. That hose right there I took off. I also took this piece off and I put it back all back together and tightened it up. And now we tighten this back up. Now that I put the gasket back in place and hopefully that'll fix my high idle. And hopefully if I'm guessing correctly and I'm really praying that I am, that it will actually help it so my idle stays between 800 and 1000 RPMs, which will give me a smooth idle when I'm at the streets on the, by the, you know, the stop lights and stop signs. So let me tighten this back up and I'll be right back with you. And as you can hear, she's actually idling a lot better now. She, she's not idling high. So it was that, it was that gasket that went on the air intake that actually was my major problem why I was idling so high. But I'm also always inspecting for other issues. You know, it doesn't hurt to always make sure your car's in good running condition. I mean, as you can see, we got a bolt broken off right there. That's for my strut. It was a brand new strut. Some mechanic put it on and torqued it too tight and just snapped that piece off. So what's the problem? But for right now, it's something I can deal with. And you can see I got that guy right there. That's all brand new. And heck yeah, I mean, she is idling smoothly. Let's see what she's at. Is she between 800 and 1,000? Oh yeah, she's smoothing really idly. She's almost quiet inside this cab. Nice, I like that. So like I said, whenever you do your mechanic shit, make sure you put everything back the way you found it, including every gasket there is.